Hi everybody, Lauren McLaughlin and I am back with another first date. I am so excited to have head pickleball pro Sarah Ansbury with me for this first date. Don't go anywhere guys, you're gonna wanna learn all about her. Welcome back. Once again, I'm Lauren McLaughlin. I'm joined by Sarah Ansbury, head pickleball pro. Thank you so much for joining me. Glad to be here. So we're here in beautiful Delray Beach, Florida at the APP Delray Beach Open. This will probably air, you know, slightly after that, right. but how's it, how's it going so far? You, you haven't played yet. Not yet, no. But it's we're practicing a, today. We are practicing. Ready. We will practice last night, do a little practice. We're after this heading over to practice down the road. So it's definitely uh, humid. Uh, mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. ball's pretty soft, which is uh, which is kind of fun, but also you know you got to adjust to that. So, but it's a it's a beautiful place to be. Uh, I've actually been here. I did a camp here years oh, ago, nice. um, but when they were like barely trying pickleball. Okay. So uh, so it's kind of cool now to see that they're a little bit more committed to pickleball, and it's grown yeah, quite a absolutely. bit since I've been here. Very cool. So on our first dates, we try to you know get to know everybody outside of pickleball, since right. for the most part the pickleball viewing crowd knows you very well from pickleball what you're doing all of that good stuff so why don't we just kind of we'll start easy okay. so why don't you just tell us sort of where you're from where you grew up okay i'm a west coaster uh, i grew up a little bit in california but uh mostly in portland oregon my mom okay. lives there my brother all our all the families are from there and stuff and so um spent most of most of my junior days on the west coast somewhere around there and uh and now I am in Hilton Town, South Carolina. Excellent, of course, Palmetto Dunes. Palmetto Dunes, Rocking right here. I got my logo on. <laughs> uh, so obviously sort of Portland, the Northwest area is well known for, have you see, seen the show Portlandia? Uh, and if you watch Portlandia, mm -hmm. I have been in many of those situations. I mean, that's yeah. kind of so the I'm funny like, thing. it's very accurate. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it definitely embellishes, but 100%, anytime I'm trying to explain to someone like the experience of Portland, I just mm -hmm. send them to that show. <laughs> like, and, oh, um, but, and it's totally true. And, uh, and the funny thing is, is like, um, who I'm completely spacing on her name, the actress in there. Oh, I don't know her name either. Yeah, I just know Fred Armisen's it's the, Fred Armisen. the main guy. So um, well. she, and this is going to drive me absolutely nuts because I ran into her target once. Really? And I've um, never, ever, I mean, I've met a lot of celebrities. Sure. And whatever. Um, so this is like years ago, my 20s or something like that. And I saw her in a Target, and I, I mean, because she's from one of my favorite bands of all time, Slater Kenny. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and so I went and you know seen her like I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen her in her band um, somewhere in Portland or something like that. And so, um, but that's what I always think about. And so such you were a like star, that was like your star. I mean, moment. I'm yeah. So it, it's it. I've never had that before. I've met like quite a few celebrities for some reason. She, she's she's she the one. You. She's the one it. that got me. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't watch us and doesn't know that you don't remember her name. But you'll you'll like whenever you it's gonna come to me. I mean, I can tell you every out. band she's been in. Uh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Fantastic. So growing up in Portland, how your family is still West Coast area? Yeah, my um, you know my father's my dad's side of the family is actually in like Southern Cal, okay. San Diego area. So okay. a lot of my cousins all live there, and then uh, my mom is in Portland. My in laws are all in Portland, sure. and my brother actually just moved back to Portland. So oh, nice. okay. Uh, so now yeah, that's the that's the place. It's been a while since I've been there. It's it's a far distance now, which yeah. is crazy. Oh, yeah, I mean you're you're basically like it, it, the yeah. farthest coast to coast. Yeah, you could but I, I love visiting home. It's just. Uh, don't get there very much. I know it is a great place. I we of course have the Northwest Classic in yep. Bend, Oregon. Yep. So I was there for the first time, and I, it's so gorgeous. Yeah. I would love to be in the Northwest a lot more. So very jealous that yeah. you kind of had growing up. It, of course, Wes Gabrielson, another yep. big pro player, is out there. Well. Learn how to play pickleball. Lang. Yeah, yep. it's uh, it's definitely different though. I would say like when we go back, when my wife and I go back now, I asked her I'm like for your, her birthday because we didn't have nationals and stuff. So, so like. Yeah. Um, I said, you know, do you want to do you want to go back home? And she's like, well, no. 
um, it's just not the same. Yeah, it's, that's you true. know, a lot of people have moved to Portland. It's a bigger oh, yeah. city now. So I, 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 I'm glad I got to experience Portland in the in the smaller days of so of you know small town living, not as much traffic. Yep. Now it's like. I mean, oh, traffic is everyone, not fun. The secret's out. The secret got out about Everyone Portland, moved from Seattle, California up stuff. to Portland yeah. or Seattle down to Portland. Absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned your wife, Lynn. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you guys meet? Sort of what's your, your connection story? You know, um, it, it's funny because, like, we, you know, um, we actually met online. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, her family uh, lived in Portland. She had moved um, to California for a little while. Okay. And um, her sister actually, like, got her to move back home. And um, I was working a million hours, and I had just actually like gotten out of a relationship. So neither of us, neither of us were wor sure. looking for anything, yep. and we end up like you know. And she's you know she was 22 at the time, I was 28, mm -hmm. and um, so neither of us were really looking for anything at the time. It just it was you know, it's kind of funny. And then we went out, and the, the the story is we actually had three dates in one day, and um, so we met. I had uh, my dogs. I had mm -hmm. two dogs, and she brought her dog out. And we went, and we walked. Uh, we walked by the river in Portland, um, and then she had to go to brunch with her friends. And she texts me like an hour later, "Do you want to come meet my friends?" And I go to brunch with her, and meet her friends. And then um, she's like, "What? Well, um, I have to go with them shopping or something." So a couple hours later, I get a text message, "Do you want to um, watch a movie?" So she came over. And we watched um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, and then it's like she never left. Uh, and that's oh kind gosh, of our joke. I love it. Yeah. And, and even the funnier thing is, so she spent the night, and she's she was going, she was in college at the time. Mm -hmm. Her car broke down, like the next day. So she like I can't get to class. So I end up letting her. You know, this person I just met. You're like a total stranger. Total stranger. <laughs> you know, I make her a smoothie in the morning. She said me making her the smoothie is what like. It was like she was in, you know, oh. after that. And um, so I let her borrow my car and and that was that was it. That was history. I love that's so I love those stories where you're just like and we just like didn't wanna stop being together or talking or hanging yeah. out and you're just like and now we're She's my person. I love it. That's yeah. so great. And you guys are married. Yep. You married I think ten years? Close. It, you know, it's uh, so we always say we've been married ten years. It's we've been together about ten years. Okay. Uh, because it hasn't been quite been legal that long. That is true. Uh, okay. But uh, soon after it got legal, um, we got married. Awesome. And you know, one of the big things is she wants she wanted my last name. So okay. that was uh, it was kind of why we tend to get we we kind of eloped. Um, we didn't have a wedding. We didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is, is we were at a tennis center. Okay. Um, it was. I was practicing, so I was playing tennis at the time. I hadn't played pickleball yet, and uh, I was playing with a friend of mine. I was like, "Hey, who do you know? Who do we know that can marry us, like soonish?" Yeah. And um, she's like, "Well, you know, our friend who um, lived in Eugene, and she was coming to Portland like that weekend mm -hmm. for USTA sectionals." Okay. So um, Lynn and I, my wife, uh, go to Twalton Hills Tennis Center, uh, right outside of Portland, and they've got a great pickleball program now, and. Um, so we're there watching sectionals, you know, mm -hmm. and I was in normal clothes, which people never, you know, see me in. And so they're like, oh, what do you know? We're just watching. And we basically waited around until um, our friend was done with her singles match, which is, of course, like the last match. And we snuck off. Um, you know, I made, like, we, I kind of joked, do you want to just go on a tennis court and get married? And Lynn's like, no, that's not happening. It's like, bad Sarah, enough we're at a tennis facility. <laughs> so we kind of snuck off in the corner and we had our dogs, uh, her sister, and another friend of ours and we got married. That's so, I love it, a little, nice little intimate thing. Yeah. Did you do anything after like a, like a reception or a party um, friends or Some of our anything? friends found out. I mean, we told people and so okay. they, a few of our friends did throw us a party and okay. you know, our families got to come and stuff. But uh, we actually really, we've talked about it actually getting married again. Okay. So that we can Doing have. something bigger. Because we've never done anything. We've yeah. never, uh, you know, we've never did the gifts or the, like the wedding shower or anything like that. So we've, we've talked about it. Maybe one day, All right. probably for an anniversary, yeah. you know, maybe we'll have like a fun What's thing. The 10 years coming up. There you up go. It's coming up. Yeah. Soonish. Soon so, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, it's like a little, a little tricky about that, but um, so diving into that a little bit more, obviously, and I have asked Sarah about this ahead of time, and she's cool talking about all of this. Um, obviously, proud member of the LGBT community. Um, growing up, I have to imagine Portland and the Northwest was slightly more liberal at the time. Um, yeah. yeah. What, I mean, and everybody in the community has 
a completely unique Absolutely. story yeah. with their family, mm -hmm. they're coming out, you know, where they grew up, school, mm -hmm. bullying, all that stuff. So what is kind of your experience growing up as you kind of came into that part of yourself and just, you know, what was your personal experience? You know, um, you know, I grew up in an Irish Catholic family. I went okay. to Catholic school and elementary school and, you know, um, my father is actually a lot older than my mom. Okay. Uh, so he's, so he died when I was 16. And so, you know, um, and he's 35 years older than my mom to okay. give you an idea of that. So like all of my family on that side, um, you, you know, was very much grew up in church and we, you know, um, so I, I really didn't, I really didn't understand that that was an option to be okay. totally honest. Sure. Um, I think I remember someone saying to me one time, and this is, I, I don't think I've ever told anyone this, but like, um, I remember saying something about, I think, um, you know, Katie has a crush on Krista mm -hmm. and someone had said, no, um, girls can't have crushes on girls. Yeah. So, um, and I must've been like seven or eight at the time. Okay. And that, that's kind of what, you know, stayed with me for mm -hmm. quite some time. So, you know, in high school, I didn't really understand like why I didn't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I had a couple boyfriends in high school and like, I had this, I have like the, the epitome of like, you know, um, I had a boyfriend who was a guitarist and he was in sure. a band yep. and he wrote me songs and, you know, and I'm like, I don't understand like why I'm not into this, yeah, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And so I, you know, I grew up, um, in, in a Lake Oswego, which is like a suburb sure. of Portland. So no one really, I knew was gay or mm -hmm. anything. And so I honestly didn't know it was an option. Sure. Um, or I didn't realize that that's why I was frustrated or mm -hmm. didn't care about boys. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, realistically, um, I deferred after college for a year to um, you know, for some various reasons and I ended up moving into Portland okay. and, um, so then I kind of met different people sure, yep, yep. and, uh, and, and some of my friends were gay and, uh, they, you know, I, I kind of was like, Oh, you know, th this is normal. And, um, and I remember <laughs> one time we were, um, I think I went to my first, you know, gay pride parade cause sure. Portland's big on that. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, when we're kind of easing into being gay, we say we're bi. Yeah, and sure. <laughs> I remember my friend Christina was like, um, I was like, well, there, you know, and she's like, okay, let me just tell you as one of your closest friends, you are not bisexual. You are 100% gay. <laughs> and, um, and so, and I was like, oh yeah, you're probably right. You're like, mm, yeah, I see your point. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, and, and you know, the interesting thing is I do know like my high school, um, after the year we left, um, it became more, that, that was kind of when people started being like, oh, it's okay to be gay yeah, and, a little more accepting. and everything. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was kind of in a very like non-diverse school sure, and, yeah. um, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, living in Portland and like not being focused on being an athlete, cause yep. I was so, um, you know, tennis driven my whole childhood. It was, it was like, you know, school, court, um, train done yep. and um and so when i got to be like a normal person and i started going to portland state and um it, it made me feel like it was okay yep. to be who i was and sure. then once i and i and i'll tell you the first girl i kissed i was like oh duh like, that's yeah what it, it, that's what's thing. supposed to happen <laughs> and so it you know it made me feel a lot better okay you know once i uh once i started to it was an entirely different experience than I've ever sure. experienced. And it made me feel a lot better about yeah. who I was. So a lot of people, you know, there's, there are certain people in the community that are like, I knew when I was three years yeah. old and it was, you know, either my family was like, no, nope, this is not how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Or they were very accepting. So for you, it was, it was a little more later in life. Kind mm -hmm. of, it wasn't something where you were just like, this is who I am at a very young age. Yeah. It's My wife was that way. I mean, okay. she's known yeah. since she was like her first memory sure. and she grew up in a very strict Asian household, Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And, um, she actually got kicked out of her house. Okay. That's why she was in California. Yep. And, um, and the funny thing is, is she's got two sisters and her younger sister had started realizing that she was also probably, okay. um, you know, bisexual at the time. Sure. Uh, and, and that was actually why Lynn moved back was to help her sister, um, get through things. She came out to her family like three times. Okay. Um, and it was still not very acceptable. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I show up and that, that I was really the first person they accepted, sure. um, which was, you know, nice at least. Yeah. Do they, is her relationship with her family now in a better place? Much better. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's, um, 
you know, there, it, it's and it's very hard to it, it's it's really hard for me to understand, you know, when you know a parent can say being gay is not okay, yeah, um, but then still love you and have that. So I know that that may be a little bit of the situation. Sure. On that side, you know, um, I was very lucky that um, when I came out to my mom um, and my brother, that they were very accepting. I mean, my mom was confused, like she didn't get it. Sure. Uh, but you know, we've we've grown a lot from that situation. But even I remember her; um, she had told um, a friend of hers. Oh, you know, Sarah came out to me, and um, her name was Robin. And Robin tells me the story because she's known me since I was 12, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I guess she says to my first thing she says to my mom, have you met your daughter? <laughs> like, you know, um, uh -huh. she, you know, she so she knew since yeah. I was 12, you yeah. know, um, and and so that was, you know, kind of funny. But, you know, it, it's been a good good side on my in my situation. Um, I know I was actually more concerned about my my dad's side of my family. Sure. My, my father had passed by then. Mm -hmm. But um, I was very close to my aunt and uncle. And at the time, they were in their 70s sure. and you know um very conservative very so my cousins actually said don't come out to them okay. like just just don't like yeah. they're not going to accept you yeah. um and i sat them down and i you know i said okay this is this is who i am and, and it was important for me to come out to them because mm -hmm. it was the closest thing to my father yep. and um and my uncle said the first thing he said he was like are you happy and um, I said, yes, I am happy. And he said, that that's all I care about. We're too old and too tired to care about all these stupid things that we cared out about for so many years. Yeah. So that was, um, that really meant a lot to me. Yeah. Do you have, I mean, as part of the community, have, do you feel like, do you feel a responsibility for younger people that are growing up being gay, struggling with being gay to kind of, you yeah. know, e either seek them out, whether it's through tennis uh -huh. or through pickleball and just kind of, I, I always feel like, you know, once you're part of the community, it, you always want to create such a safe space mm -hmm. because everyone has had such different experiences and some have been very traumatic for yeah. people. And is it, do, do you find that, you know, when you meet someone that's maybe struggling with that, or you've had conversations with people um, that you, you try to be yeah, I mean, I made a conscious choice when I got into pickleball, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden, like, you know, we realized, oh, like, you're kind of famous, like, yeah. and uh, I made that choice to be 100% out, and to, you know, when I was coaching tennis, and, I mean, people knew I was gay, mm -hmm. but, um, and I worked a lot of juniors, and, you know, so with all the kids, I was always very open about who I was, um, and at that time, it made me so happy, because they would ask me questions, like, why do people care, like, yeah. And that was like, wow, we've we've come such a long way in a short mm -hmm. time. But um, but I, but in my job in the tennis world, I would um, instead of saying my wife, I would say my partner. Yep. Um, so I was a little bit more private in that sure. because I was concerned. Um, I had tattoos, you know, I have tattoos. So um, even the job I was at before, we're concerned about my tattoos. You know, mm -hmm. we're concerned about this image. Yep. Um, that I portrayed, but when I went full-time pickleball, um, my wife and I had a conversation. In Portland, we felt very comfortable about holding hands. Sure. Um, but you know, when we started to travel, um, we would be in places that we didn't feel safe. Yep. And um, and so normally, when my wife and I would hold hands, we would walk separately. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, Lynn would be a little bit more. She would, she would be more concerned than I was. I was kind of like, screw it. I yeah. don't care. Yeah. Um, but there would be times um, we were not in good situations. And then, um, and even when I first started um, pickleball and I started to become like, you know, more aware, I had a lot of people who had never met a gay person in the pickleball community. The pickleball community was a lot different yeah. when I first started. It mm -hmm. was very, it was very much 50 plus and it was, um, for a lot of people, I would hear, we would hear comments um, that were derogatory, mm -hmm. um, and you know my wife would be watching me, and she'd sit behind these you know older people, and they wouldn't um, know who she was. They wouldn't know who mm -hmm. she was, and they would make comments about derogatory comments, yep. you know, and that would really upset her. And um, but I really felt it was important that if we were starting this new life, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that 
I, I did not care that it would be much more. And Lynn would be with me all the yep. time. And she taught with me. And I feel very comfortable saying this is my wife yep. and this is who she is. I didn't want to hide that. I didn't yep. want to hide the person that is my person. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it definitely wasn't always easy. Um, but what, I, what really helped the first few years I started playing pickleball, um, I remember we were, <laughs> we were at an, an exhibition in the villages. Oh, okay. And, um, and there was, um, and, and I, like Wesley Gabrielson was there and he, he had done it for a few years. So he brought me. And, um, you know, a couple of the guys were like, wow, there's a lot more lesbians here watching this year. And Wes had made the comment, like, to one of the guys, like, well, who, I mean, finally there's someone yeah. that, that is different. And so, I mean, those first few years, I, what really made it worth it was actually older couples who had um, come up to me and would say, we've been together 30 years, sure. married two. Yeah. You know, um, so that actually made me very, very happy um, from that standpoint, because I, I mean, I hear so many stories and I knew about so many people who were closeted until much older in life. Yep. It's definitely easier now for younger people, um, but I've always felt that to be an important part of who I am. And um, either you take it or you leave it. And, um, I actually, you know, at the first year at Indian Wells for nationals, you know, that's a, like gay pride is actually around that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I got this wristband, um, for nationals mm -hmm. specifically. And a couple of people made a comment to me about, you really sure you want to wear that on TV? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I said, I don't care. You know, yeah. because even if it's just like the two people that it relates to, good by me. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to piss off these people or whatever, that's really not who I'm here for. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's not who I am anyway. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and actually a couple of players have made that comment to me. Yeah. Um, so. There's, there's still work to be done. There's always work to be Absolutely. done. Absolutely. And I feel like the thing is, too, I mean, whether it's about race, whether it's about, you know, being gay it's this message is continually out about it's about representation mm -hmm. and that if you don't see yourself in you know your interests you're on screen in movies or whatever that's that's it's just it doesn't allow people yeah. to be who they are so i think that is such a good thing and i know of course you know pickleball does have people that are gay that are playing that are out there and they might not be you know as you know, visible as you are in your role and kind of being out there and teaching and one of the well-known pros. So I think it is, and I mean, completely not the same thing at all, but it's really funny because I feel like Lynn and I relate a lot because uh -huh. she, she is very fiery, oh, as yeah. am I, and very passionate about things she believes in, mm -hmm. what she's going to speak out against, what she's not. And I have, of course, not on the same level, but I've had people come up to me at tournaments and just be like, thank you for saying what you said. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it is still a little like hush hush. Mm -hmm. Like we know this isn't necessarily everybody believes this, but mm -hmm. like, thank you for saying that. And I know that's probably, you know, what you were saying that you've experienced as well. You know what, what I think is really tough is I think it's much tougher on Lynn than mm -hmm. it is me. And, um, and a lot of that's because as players, I think a lot of time we forget like when I meet players and their spouses, mm -hmm. I specifically go to the spouse and say hello because sure. I know how difficult it's been on her to be kind of in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And um, and what's really frustrating is she has she she has a strong opinion and and I love that about her. If someone says something about me, she wants you know she wants to defend me yep. and um, and. And I, and I feel very strongly about certain things as well, but I also, you know, I also know that. Pick your battles. Pick your battles in a lot of ways. And what's really frustrating for myself and for her is just because she says something on her, I've had people message me sure. um, about her, whatever she said. Yep. And, um, and I said, listen, why are you asking me about this? Yeah. This is, my wife has her own voice. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, and I've had to ask Lynn before, and, and I hate that I had to ask her this, to, to let it go. 
Yeah. And um, because no matter what, there's always someone that's going to keep fighting. Yep. And whether it's right or wrong, mm -hmm. um, I don't, if someone says something negatively about me, then they don't know me. Yep. So that's what it is. And uh, unfortunately in this world, I mean, I remember when I first started reading the comments on YouTube mm -hmm. and reading these things, whether it was about I was too masculine or um, many other things, you know, um, or because because I'm masculine or because that um, I, you know, um, they don't know who I am, that I'm um, unfriendly mm -hmm. or like this. I'm like, it. you don't know me. Yeah. And anybody who knows me knows who I am as yeah. a person. And, um, and that's what really frustrates Lynn is she wants people to know how much of a teddy bear I am. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's okay if they don't. And, uh, but, but it really, I mean, I, there was a post that she put up and she made a joke and it was a joke and it meant nothing. And a pro player messaged me about it. And I said, listen, you want me to tell my wife to take down a post. Yeah. I said, not only is that offensive to her, it's offensive to me because you're saying she doesn't have her own voice yeah. and you're saying that I control my wife. Yeah. And, uh, that's the last thing I want to do. You know, she is who she is because, and that's who I love. Exactly. Um, you know, she's, you know, fiery and passionate and I'm cool and chill. Yep. You know, we're very, you know, opposite in that mm -hmm. factor, you know, she'll get lit up and about something and, and I do, I get so fired up, but like, you know, uh, people don't realize how much these comments hurt. And, um, and I've, I've talked to other players about these types of things and I had a friend of mine, you know, she just said, you know, she brought up a comment someone had wrote. I said, don't you dare look at that. Yeah. I, I said, you know, I, I've been in this for a while and, um, and I learned, you know, within two years, just don't read it. Yeah. Like, because well, number one, they don't know you. Um, they've never been on a court with you. And um, who we are on the court is one thing. Yeah. And then who we are off the court is another thing. And we can represent who we are on the court which is, you know, the goal. Yep. Um, but, you know, um, it, the thing too is in this in this day now that internet, social media, yeah. hide behind your computer and spew hate yeah. from behind a keyboard when you've ne like these are human beings yeah. you're talking about. How yeah. <laughs> how would like how would you like it if people were yeah. doing that to you? And I, I feel like it's oh I don't care I don't care, and it's just like. It's so, oh. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, it happens. what I'm going to do, um, but it's like, that's what gets me is you can, you can believe what you want to believe, but then don't like, if you don't have the balls to say it to someone's face, then you shouldn't say it at all. Yeah. Like, and I just feel like the day of, you know, social media, the internet has just given Brutal. rise to the worst in people mm -hmm. where not you know not that they should say it or think it regardless but there was a day when they would never yeah they would never say that out loud they mm -hmm. would never say it to someone's face but they'll sit behind a computer countries yeah. away and hate someone yeah and that's just i just don't i don't understand it well yeah i know um you know when i was younger and in portland and it, it is different in, in a sense that you know, we live in South Carolina now. And, um, you know, one of the first things when I was approached about Hilton Head, Lynn was like, we can't live in South Carolina. Yeah. Because she didn't feel safe. She didn't think we'd be safe. Mm -hmm. And um, and I understood that. And, you know, because not only, and I forget, we forget this all the time. Not only are we a lesbian couple, we're biracial. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I mean, we just don't even think about these sure. things. But, um, you know, when... I think before gay marriage became legal in Oregon, there was a measure, a ballot measure to pass, you know, and when California did it and everything. And I, I actually, a, lot, a bunch of my friends and I volunteered for this. And, um, you know, we did all this stuff. And, and, and I remember my brother saying, he's like, there's no way they're not going to pass it. We live in Oregon. I said, yeah, but we, you know, there's Portland and then there's the rest of yep. Oregon. Yep. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things that people don't realize are, are from there. And, you know, I just remember being so hurt and so like, how can these people decide how we live? Yeah. And, um, 
And I, you know, at the same time, I understood, you know, because I, I grew up very religious in a, in a religious household. And, um, but, um, you know, I think I, I'm also a little older than Lynn. So I, I dealt with some other experience that mm -hmm. she has not dealt with and that, you know, she's dealt with experience that I have not dealt with. Sure. And, um, and, you know, I, I, we all come from, I mean, I could tell you stories that, you know, when you meet me or you, you would never think or believe, sure. but that's also what's, you know, put me in, you know, my older years, especially being like, whatever it is, there's always somebody out there that we're going to reach. And, um, and whether that's, you know, um, a gay person, a biracial person, a woman, mm -hmm. um, you know, any of those things, like there can be, you know, 20 terrible comments and terrible behaviors. And then there could be one that's worth it. Yep. And yep. for me, that's worth it. And, um, even honestly, um, at the last national, someone, um, a male that I had worked with had made a comment because I did happen to have a lot of lesbian fans at some yeah, of these matches. Sure. They had signs. And, um, and it was great. I loved it because gay pride is around there. So, sure. um, and he had made a comment about, um, well, do you only appeal to gay people or something? And I said, wow, that's unbelievably offensive. Um, but just the fact that that's where your brain goes tells you we, it's just people think one way and you don't understand why they think that way. Yeah. So I always go under, you know, no matter how, you know, what someone says and um, I don't know what their situation is they came from. Sure. So whatever they spew or don't spew or whatever, um, I, I don't have time and energy to waste it. And that's the thing. It's, that's about them. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not about your situation, your life. That's about them. Yep. Like it's their problem, their issue, their thinking. And you know, it, and that's the thing, like it shouldn't have any bearing on mm -mm. how you feel about yourself, what you do. But all the time, like you said, like those comments hurt. Like, yep. You're still, you're still a person. You still mm -hmm. have feelings. You still want people to like you and respect you and appreciate who you are as a person. So like, there's that whole dynamic of like, I don't even know you and you're saying this terrible thing like clearly that's on you but like it's still, there's a part yeah. of you that's still oh like, absolutely come on man like yeah it's a it's a you know and i think lynn um got off of social media for a while mm -hmm. it's probably the best thing to do um and because like for me i'm on social media i just post my stuff and yeah. i don't you know and i'll comment um to the people that comment on me and all that kind of stuff and I love to be involved but um I am tired of wasting my energy and frustration you to protect your own mental health yeah you know I've gone through my days where I've been out there and you know players say things or you know people say things and it's it, it makes you question every fiber of your being mm -hmm. um uh for a while like uh, Lynn had me uh, you know I had a ponytail for a while in the short hair we did that because of some of the comments of wow how I was too masculine and too manly. And so my wife wanted me to do that. And, and we did that and it did actually, but it's, what's frustrating is, y you know, um, if, if, you, if you've ever met me, you know, and I had a, a friend of mine come up to me recently and, um, you know, someone had said, well, you know, um, Sarah's pretty, stand, you know, standoffish. And, um, and she's like, have you ever had a conversation with Sarah? Um, and, um, and she's like, it just bugs me that they don't like, and I was like, you don't have to defend me, yeah. you know? And I, and I love that you want to defend me. And, um, and I love that. I think that's amazing. Um, but the people that, um, I value and the, and the people that I've met, I mean, I'm, I'm just so thankful for the impact that I have in the pickleball community and that I have had. And, um, and my focus has, you know, not always been about playing on the pickleball court, you know, um, probably most of the time it's not about playing on the pickleball yeah. court. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, we are who we are. And I don't think it's that difficult to, when someone wants to talk to you or, or whatever, to ask them how they are and, um, take a minute to take a picture and all that. Like, I mean, so that's, that's kind of how I've always gone with it is, Okay, the person that I can impact is the person that comes up to me to determine it and introduces themselves. Sure. And um, and that's amazing to me because, yeah. 
um, I have some of the most amazing fans. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I can't even tell you um, how lucky I feel for what I've gotten in those last few years yeah. just from pickleball. Um, you know, whether it be because um, I'm a woman or a pickleball player or a teacher or a lesbian or, or whatever, um, you know, one of the one of the referees here, um, you know, came up to me. She's like, I looked for you in Utah and you weren't here. And um, a few years back, she made these, you know, little kind of pot holder things for our bowls. And, you know, we we've had them for years and she brought me new ones because I told her how much I love them. And like, you know, and just some of these things I. Um, you know, I got off the court in Punta Gorda recently, and this guy brought me a, um, you know, uh, a little gift bag, and it, it had a Superman logo, and he said the S is for Sarah, and he noticed that I, I ate fruit snacks. So in the fruit snack, he had a bag of fruit snacks, and I never met this person, and he, you know, he wrote this card, and he's like, just thank you for the impact you've made in pickleball. So it's like, it, when you have those kinds yeah. of experiences, like, I mean, and I've got so many of those, like, and that, that means the world to me. Yeah. So. If that's the impact that I make, then yes, someone makes a comment and 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 I want to fight them. Like yeah. I mean, my my gut instinct is don't you dare talk to someone about that mm -hmm. like that, you know, um, it, it, you know whatever it is. But nothing I say is going to change your mind. Yep. Yeah. You totally. Know. And that's the thing I think. If you've never met Sarah, if you've never had a conversation with Sarah, and you think she's standoffish or <laughs> doesn't, yep, go talk to her first. And then maybe reassess your opinion because <laughs> she's quite lovely and wonderful. And if you're at a tournament where she's at with her dogs and Lynn, go see the dogs too because they're super fun. They and got we a love fan them club. as well. <laughs> they do absolutely. It's kind of like Zane Navratil and his dog Murray yeah. now have a fan club. Fantastic. Um, well, so let, let's go slightly off a serious subject and just kind of get as we wrap up. Obviously, you come from a big tennis background. Yeah. Um, just let everybody know kind of, you know, your young tennis career, junior tennis career, if you played in school, kind of where, what that trajectory was in terms mm -hmm. of tennis. Uh, I mean, my mom coaches tennis. And, okay. um, and so I've been playing tennis since I was four years old. Like, uh, there's always the joke that when I was a baby, you know, she would have a crib in the back of the tennis oh, uh -huh. court and I, and I would be there. My brother played as well, but I was definitely more competitive in that. And um, so... Um, you know, I spent most of my childhood not liking tennis, to be totally honest. And I think a lot of us do get burned out by that mm -hmm. because you don't ha get to have a kind of normal childhood and that yep. causes other problems. And, yep. and, um, and so I, um, and I was supposed to go play D1 tennis and all that. And I deferred and all right. uh, for a year I had some injuries. And then um, I, I was like, oh, I could be a normal person. And and I got, and that was when I really got to find out who I was. Sure. And I, I got to spend the time on being like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm gay and like, you know, and all this stuff and, and um, it, you know, and all these things that kind of led up to that, you, you know, it, you know, I wasn't necessarily a happy kid. Sure. Um, you know, I, I went through a lot of things in my junior days and um, that sucks. And, mm -hmm. but, you know, you learn and you grow for them. And so um, I, once I kind of experienced that, I, you know, I called the university that I was supposed to go to and I said, you know, I just only want to play tennis. And um, so it, that got to like, let me find myself yep. uh, and be who I was. Most of the people I played in juniors or collegiate with, like they don't play anymore or yeah. they hate it. Or, yeah. um, so I, the only reason I fell back into tennis was my mom was going to run, like she just got this director position at this club. And um, she's like, I need help teaching. Sure. So I started kind of teaching with her, okay. and um, and then I started playing again. And so um, I, you know, realized I love teaching. You know, yeah. this is what I do. And um, and, uh, and up to this point, you hadn't taught tennis before. Uh, you know, I helped in okay. juniors. You know, sure. you know, we used to run like you know work camps and okay. stuff, and yep. and I used to help. You know. Um, you know, my coaches with their, sure. with their stuff. So, um, and you know, I was actually like a psych major. I thought I was going to be a, um, a drug and alcohol specialist for, okay. for, for youth, you know? Uh, and then, um, and then I kind of realized this is what I like to do. And, and I started competing again. And so I, then I started playing in, um, you know, five, five plus five O plus and, um, in the thirties. And I, uh, I started doing all that like adult sure. yep. stuff. And when I kind of fell into pickleball, 
And, um, and, and really, you know, what really kicked me off is I got into a major car accident okay. um, after my first nationals. I won nationals in 2015 okay. um, with TG Master, and uh, the end of that month, I got T-boned. Wow. Um, okay. A girl uh, ran a red light, and so I actually, I can't serve in tennis anymore okay. because of yeah. um, this range of motion. So, you know, it kind of ended up working out, like, after that, because, like, with, six months later, I... It was easier for me to come back to pickleball. Sure. Um, so I'd started spending more of my time that I was playing tennis instead of playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. And and then I realized, hey, this is this is, you know, something that I can be impactful in. I'm really good at this. And yeah. I, I, I felt it in a different way sure. than I had felt on the tennis court in a very long time. So a lot of people that are, you know, high level junior junior players, they're kind of on this path, get started really young. They you know, they, they hope to be professional tennis players one day. It kind of seems like that was never really, was that kind of like in the back of your mind or was it like, sure, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it? Like, yeah, it, it, I mean, I, I know that like I was doing it and I was staying the course because yeah. that's what a lot of the people I was playing with were doing. Yep. And like, that's what my coaches kind of, you know, yep. and. Um, when you're so young at that age to yeah. know like, what do you want to do with your whole life? Like, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw some, you know, I, I'd have friends that go to bowl Terry or, or end up and they'd come back not playing tennis anymore or they'd yeah. come back with, you know, major injuries. They couldn't play tennis anymore yeah. or drug problems or, mm -hmm. you know, all these types of things that, um, you know, you realize, you're, you know, it's like growing up in junior tennis, I honestly don't wish on anybody. Um, I've heard, yeah, I've heard some things from other players. It, yeah. It's, it's. And, and that's why, like, when I started coaching tennis, um, I, I did deal with a lot of high-level players, and I coached some college, and and then I made the decision, this, I don't want, th this isn't what makes me happy, yeah. you know, because you're really dealing with parents more than anything. Oh, yeah. And, um, and I was always, I would have rules on my court. Listen, if you throw your racket, you're off the court. Yep. If you swear, if you yell at somebody, you're off the court. Mm -hmm. And some parents didn't like that, you know. Um, but, you know, the reality was is I knew I experienced that life mm -hmm. of tennis, and I didn't want to wish that on anybody. Yep. And so, um, you know, I got to reach kids in different ways um, and help them on their path, which is amazing. But I always made the promise I would never lie to somebody. So, uh, it, you know, I'd have parents say, well, can my kid play D1? And I'd say no. And, um, and then they'd ask. You know, my assistant coach, yep. oh yeah, if you just pay me this much, yep. you know, uh -huh. so whatever, if that's what's going to take, then fine, but I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Like I, you know, that's just how I feel. So yeah, you don't want to perpetuate the problem. Kind of like, you know, you so it, or what you experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's like, whatever, whatever we can do, whatever we can learn from our experiences, I think is, is the value. You know, and whatever that is, um, and and that's been nice because we, you know, Lynn and I, when we got in, we traveled all over this country mm -hmm. to see how pickleball was done in different areas. We saw different cultures, we saw different, you know, types of areas to live in, and mm -hmm. and uh, and we realized what we wanted and what we didn't want. Yeah. And um, we also realized, you know, what was positive in some areas and what was not positive in some areas. And and I can't tell you how many times I'd go somewhere and I still go somewhere. And they say the male coach, culture here is oppressive. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got 10 guys on a court telling three women all the things they're doing wrong yeah. and what they should be doing instead. So I feel a lot of connection to that in mm -hmm. a sense if, you know, um, if I can impact women and saying, like, this is who you are and don't let anyone tell you who you are mm -hmm. and don't let anyone tell you how to play. Yeah. You know, you see that a lot in pickleball. People have this idea that they know what's right. And they have this idea that they're helping or assisting. Yeah. But, you know, it, it always comes down to if, if, if you're not saying anything positive, shut your mouth. Um, because you're not helping the person next to you. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's the same as when we're on a pickleball court. You know, uh, it's, why, it's why if I'm on the pickleball court, I'm, I'm really tired of being on the court and, and not being happy. Yeah. And, you know, whether that's, you know, a partner that doesn't treat you so well or whatever, um, the number one thing that I look for in partnerships right now is someone that respects me for who I am and, um, and doesn't belittle me on the court and, um, and that we can have a mutual relationship yeah. um, that is respectful and, um, and, you know, works for everybody. Yeah. So last thing. So outside of pickleball, outside, you're in Hilton Head, South Carolina oh, now no. with Lynn, teaching at Palmetto Dunes. 
what are your guys' like favorite things to do, either like to relax or treat yourself or like like what are your guys' We're homebodies. You're to just, be totally honest. Like with the dogs and you know, just we just out, you know, uh, like uh, the day before I came here, you know, I took the day off and we just spent the day in our house, you know, um, watching movies or whatever and um, we just like to be together. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I love I love going like, you know, we love taking the boys to the beach and and doing all that kind of stuff. But um, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, and our, our friends kind of know this about us, you know, um, we're, we're more than likely to just stay home and, yeah. and, and spend family don't time. Don't us, we're not coming. Kind of, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we like our family put us time. in the position to say no, thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we like to cook together. You know, I like to, um, you know, I like to be the support, as supportive as I can to my wife is how she's been to me for so many years. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, she gave up her life to follow me and, and, and build this pickleball dream. Sure. So, um, you know, it's, she's, you know, everyone always asks, well, why isn't Lynn here? I was like, you know what? She spent her days on the court here with me. And, um, it, it, and, it, and it has a lot to do the same time. She does, you know, she's like, I'm in the corner. No one ever says hi to me, yeah. you know? And, uh, and it's, it's a different thing. So it's like, I don't want her to feel like she's in my shadow, mm -hmm. um, here at the court. So it's actually, it's great that she's at home and, um, you know, uh, if, if I'm traveling, I'm sending her pictures of everything I'm eating and, yeah. you know, who I'm with. And, and that's, you know, um, that's what makes me happy and I us happy. It. So your guys' happy place is together at home with the dogs, yep. just hanging out. I love it. I can yep. support that. 100%. <laughs> I, that's kind of my happy, happy place, but it's just like me by myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In my own space, like no one bother me. I'll do everything exactly how I want to do it, what I want to do it. Yeah. But I, I can appreciate that. 100%. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. A huge thank you, Sarah, to you for opening up, sharing a, a little bit about who you are and your story and all of that good stuff. Hopefully more people will be, I apologize if now you're just going to get like bombarded at oh. every tournament that's like, Sarah, we want to talk to you. We want to talk to you. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. But she does like gifts and everything. <laughs> so if you have a special little gift basket you would like to give Sarah, she will happily take that. So I love it. But thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you. It's been an amazing first date. And uh, guys, we have more amazing first dates coming up in the coming weeks. So make sure and tune in to see who I'm going on a first date with next. Thanks so much, guys.